Hey everybody, DJ here and welcome back to DJ Tutorials. This is going to be looking at the Cycles X, the new build of Cycles. It's currently in the alpha stages and I'll show you how you can download it and we're also going to take a look at the rendering speeds and viewport rendering and all that with an RTX 3090. If you haven't yet, please take a moment to like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out. We also have a Discord server if you're interested in going on there for any help or just collaborating with some other artists. I also have a Patreon, so if you feel like donating to help cover the cost of these videos, please feel free to click on the links down below in the video description and you can take a look at those. Okay, so first let's just take a look at how you can download this version. So basically go to the Blender website, go to download. And then you'll click over here where it says builds and then right here where it says builds daily go to experimental and you're going to see a version right here that says cycles x so it's in its early stages keep in mind so um you know this is not an official official release this is technically released according to this but there are some things that are still being worked on i would not recommend using this for any production related uh projects or anything like that just yet because there's some things that aren't quite uh, usable like volumes and things like that but we'll take a look at some of the things that do work and how much quicker it is at rendering some things so you'll just basically download that it's gonna end up looking like a zip file and I'll show you what you'll do with that so right here you'll get basically a zip file that looks something like this you will extract that to a location and then you'll end up with something that looks kind of like this. You'll open up the folder and then you'll find the item right here. That's the application. So it's not quite the installer and everything that you're used to. You'll have to basically extract that file to a location on your computer, but then you can open this up from that location and you can make a shortcut if you want to your desktop and call it Blender Cycles X or whatever it is that you want to call it. And that is basically how you do that part. So let's take a look inside the program. So I've made this little session here and I got some lights and I have a backdrop and everything for this particular text. If you want to learn how to make this text, I'll put a card up right now and you can check out how to make uh, something similar to this. And basically this is, uh, it, it's very similar to what you're used to. And uh, anybody who's a longtime uh, Blender user will know that uh, usually when they do these updates, there's not a whole lot different the biggest difference was when they went to the new uh, 2.8. So, um, you know, that was the huge, huge update as far as the interface and everything. But there's really not that much different that you'll notice right off the bat. The main thing that is the important part about Cycles X is basically that they've rewritten how the rendering is done. So if we could take a look over here, let's actually try and make the interface a little bit bigger. So I've just increased the uh, resolution a little bit, so hopefully you can see it a little bit better. But you can see we have cycles on. I've changed this to GPU compute, and I've changed some of the sampling here. And we're going to keep adaptive sampling off. That's not something that's new to Cycles X. So um, I know there's a lot of people when I do these videos who have comments about how you can optimize things and set things a little bit different as far as efficiency is concerned. That's all great, but when you're comparing one to one, it's best to try and keep things as similar as possible. So for now, we're just going to keep adaptive sampling off. And we're going to have denoising done by the denoising data in the compositing tab here. So that's how we're going to be doing the denoising, okay? So let's go back here to the rendering. And you'll notice if you go down to the advanced, this is pretty much all the same. But under light paths, we'll take a look down here. And you can see that I've set the max bounces here to, uh, if you click here, to full global illumination. Now, Traditionally, the full global illumination was 128, I believe, all the way down, and now it's set to 32. I'm pretty sure you could increase this, but let's just keep it at whatever the preset is here for the full global illumination. Now, you can also see there is some fast global illumination setting right here, and if you click that, you can see that it goes to a, a couple different passes, and if we go down to this setting right here, you can see where it says fast GI approximation. And this is a new thing. So if you hover over this, it'll kind of tell you what is going on. So it says right there, approximate, diffuse, indirect with uh, background tinted, blah, 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 blah. Basically what this says is that it's doing some approximations to speed up your rendering. Now, this is something that's been used in other engines. Um, there are things like LuxCore that uses something kind of like this. And uh, I'm fairly certain that Octane also has uh, something similar to this. 
Basically, it's a way of trying to speed up the rendering, and it will make some general lighting approximations and bounces and stuff like that to change it. So you can feel free to play with this. We're really not going to use this because, like I said, I want to do a one-to-one -one comparison between the old cycles and the new cycles with all of the similar settings that are available. So we're going to actually change this back to the full global illumination here. So that's all 32. And you'll see here that the caustics are currently on with the filter glossy on and all that. And with this scene right here, we have a lot of light sources. We have um, a displacement map that's going on with the background. We have a more advanced sort of uh, shading with the emission shading that's going on with the text here. And we have some extra reflections going on with the ground and all that kind of stuff there. So we also have an HDRI that's in here. I'm not going to show you how to do that, but we have an HDRI that's set here with a strength of 0.5. And basically what we're going to do here is we're just going to take a look and see how the uh, how this engine sort of compares to or the new way that this engine sort of compares to the old way. So if we go up here, go to edit preferences, we can change the way that our uh, render devices are being used. So since I have an RTX card, I have optics and something that I've noticed is that optics does work with the CPU on the old version. But when I use the CPU in the render with this new version of Cycles, I'm noticing that the uh, CPU is actually, it, it seems to not being to be being used. So I'm going to show you what that looks like with the a monitoring software that I have here. And we're going to take a look and see how this works. But I'm going to leave it on just so that you can, you know, know that I've at least had the option selected. And I'm going to save this file here. And you'll notice, let's just go back over here. You'll notice that there's no area under performance. There's no area for tiles. And that's because this new system uses basically one full screen to render out your image. It does not use a tile-based system. And this is a system that's been used in other engines. I know that the 1.0 renderer for ProRender, I believe, used that sort of system. The new one is a little bit different. Uh, the 2.0 for Pro Render is a little bit different. Um, and Octane uses this, at least it appears to use this exact same type of way of rendering, where it basically renders the entire image out instead of the individual tiles. So what I'm going to do here is I have OCCT, and this is version 8.2.1, and I have here a core that's visible and the total CPU usage, and then I have a, the GPU core load, and then the memory usage. So we'll see how much memory is being used and how much the GPU is actually being used for the RTX 3090 here. So, and if you want to know about the unboxing and a little bit more about the RTX 3090 and how I put it in to my system, you can take a look at this video here that I'm going to put a card in, or you can look below in the video description for the link. I have a 4K render, so this is at 200% of 1920 by 1080. And then in the samples, I have 1028 here for the render. Again, no adaptive sampling, no denoising selected here. And basically everything is set to generally the defaults, except for the light paths is set to the full global illumination. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and hit the render button to take a look at how this actually starts to render it, um, since it doesn't use that tile-based system anymore. And then while, it's, uh, while you get to see that kind of start up, I'm going to show you the uh, OCCT uh, monitoring here so that you can see how it's actually rendering this out, how much the GPU core load is and the CPU usage, because I have noticed that the CPU doesn't quite get used um, unless I only am using the CPU as the device. Uh, it's kind of weird. So I'll show you how that looks here. So let's go ahead and hit F12. And it's going to take a moment because it's going to be building that uh, plane in the background that is a that has a displacement and some subdivisions on it. So you'll see that right there being built. And again, this is a 4K. So it's uh, I have 4K monitors. It looks pretty cool on my screen because it's very high resolution. But um, on yours, it's probably only going to look like 9, 1920 by 1080. And of course, how um, YouTube uh, compresses everything. But here we go. So you can see there it's doing the whole frame. Okay. So the whole frame is being rendered all in one go. So what's cool about that is if it looks good at a certain amount of samples, you can always hit escape to cancel the render. But then here, let's take a look at the OCCT. And you can see there that the CPU usage, that's where it was building the file right there. 
and then it's kind of petered out down to about three point uh, or four percent here. So I have a Threadripper that has 24 cores that are basically not being used at this point, which is good for electrical, you know, savings. But it's good to take note of that when we start looking at the comparison of the other, uh, the way that cycles will be rendering. So here we go here, GPU core load. It's uh, sort of, um, you know, dipping down and coming back up for all the ways that it's uh, presenting the new version here. That's usually what causes these uh, peaks and valleys here is when it's updating the viewer. It'd be really nice if they would basically remove that for the new cycles so that you can just have it render completely through without any of these peaks and valleys because you do save a lot of time. But let's go ahead and let this render and I'll leave this open just so you can take a look at how this goes. Okay, so there we go. We have the full amount of uh, samples there. We also have the denoise, so some of those little areas that you saw here and there from the defocus in the background. You can see that it's uh, it's looking pretty great. You know, we got some really nice detail here in the bottom and um, pretty cool render. And it was uh, three minutes and 46 seconds. So one last thing here, I did have the uh, a defocus for the camera there. So you can take a look here. I have the uh, depth of field set to the object here, and then the f-stop is set to a 1.0. So not too bad, uh, three minutes and, uh, you know, let's see here, it was uh, three minutes, 46 seconds. Now I, I know that when I was not recording, it was around three minutes and 12 seconds. So, you know, I, I am using my GPU a little bit for um, doing the uh, recording here, but it uh, looks pretty good. Um, and let's go ahead and take a look at what this looks like in the older version. So let's open up the regular Blender that I have open right now that is not Cycles X. So you can see here that I have 2.92 right here installed. Let's go ahead and open the Cycles X test. So everything here is basically exactly the same, okay? I want everyone to understand that. So I'm basically just opening up the file again and let's take a look at a couple things here. So you can see here that I have the auto tile size uh, add-on in here. So let's change this to 512 by 512 because I know that uh, for the GPU itself, which we're going to be using that as a one-to-one -one comparison because Cycles X does not appear to be using the CPU. So in order for us to be um, more accurate in this comparison, we're going to be doing a 512 by 512 tile size because I know that that's more efficient than some of these other tile sets. But basically that's going to be the only thing we're going to do there to change the um, sort of performance or efficiency of the rendering here. So everything else is exactly the same. Let's just double check, go to preferences here, go to system, optics. We're gonna remove the Threadripper here and let's make sure that that's saved. And let's hit F12 to start this render. And then we're gonna start seeing some tiles and you'll see the GPU memory usage here. So we're gonna take a look and see how that compares. All right, so there we go. So you can see there, here's the 512 by 512 tile right there, and it's rendering out. You can see that here's the GPU memory usage. The GPU core load, it looks like it's more set to a 98 or 100%, whereas the uh, Cycles X was somewhere around the 90s to 92, I think, and it had um, what appeared to be a few more peaks and valleys. So you can see there that it's a little bit more stable in this direction here at 100% or at least close to the core load being right up there at the top. You can see here the CPU usage is still low. We're not really using the CPU to render this out um, because Cycles X didn't appear to be using that either. So let's take a look and see how this uh, finishes up.
Okay, so there we go. We have the end there. So uh, the last one was three, 3 minutes 46 seconds. This one is 4 minutes and 20. So you can see there that um, there is quite a bit that uh, it's a little bit, it's quite a bit faster actually. So, you know, it's uh, r around 30 seconds faster for that particular render. And, you know, in the grand scheme of things, that may not feel like it's very much to you, but I will tell you this from doing animations and things like that. If you can save yourself 30 seconds or so on every frame with everything exactly the same as far as your render settings and all that kind of stuff, um, and it's basically a one-to-one, -one, you know, difference it's or comparison, it's all the same settings, everything is the same, except it's just, you know, that much faster. Over the course of an entire animation, that's quite a huge change. Um, it could be days of render time that you have saved yourself from doing even a short animation. So this, um, you know, for a lot of people, like you may not be able to get the size that uh, 512 by 512 tile size, you're going to be more around the 256 by 256. I know that people say that the tile size doesn't matter anymore, but I know when I do my uh, render tests and I do uh, checks to see if the tile size does have a difference, I know that there is a difference there. So, and as you saw when we were running the render, um, the uh, GPU usage and the uh, GPU core load, there was a little bit of a change between the two uh, versions of cycles. So whereas one was using around 92% of the GPU core, uh, the old version of Cycles was using more around 100%, and it didn't have those peaks and valleys. So I do think that Cycles X, it, it is still in you know production. It's still being worked on and all that kind of stuff. So it's important to remember that. It's, it's not quite a, a full release or anything like that. It's important to remember that. But there are areas of improvement, and I think that if they're able to get Cycles X to where there won't be those peaks and valleys, and it will use more of your GPU, and it will kind of like um, allow you to control when it updates the uh, viewport and all that kind of stuff, we could find a lot of savings in the time on top of what we currently have. So I'm not going to go into the CPU, um, you know, changes at all because a lot of people really don't care about, or at least, you know, as far as I can tell, people really don't care about the CPU changes. Um, if you do want to see something like that, make sure that you leave a comment down below in the video description. So that's pretty much it for uh, this video on Cycles X. I really just wanted to show you how... Uh, the new render engine seems to be shaping up and more of a one-to-one -one comparison between the two. This wasn't really a benchmark comparison uh, video or anything like that. If you do want to see something like that, make sure that you leave a comment below in the uh, video description to let me know um, that that's what you kind of want to see. And uh, I, can, I can arrange that if I have the time. For more videos on Cycles X or any sort of videos in general, make sure that you're subscribed to the channel so that you can see what the new releases are. And I will see you guys next time on DJ Tutorials.